Hello friends, so in this video we are going to be discussing chapter 19 on temperature. This chapter concludes with a study of ideal gases on the macroscopic scale, and in this chapter we are concerned with the relationships among such quantities such as pressure, volume, and the temperature of a gas. In this chapter we are going to discuss the topics of temperature and the zeroth law of thermodynamics, uh, thermometers and the Celsius temperature scales, the constant volume gas thermometer, and the absolute temperature scale, thermal expansion of solids and liquids, and the macroscopic description of an ideal gas. So in the first section we're discussing temperature and the zeroth law of thermodynamics. So we'll need to consider the energy transfer exchanges that we learned back in chapter 8 and particularly focus on the heat and electromagnetic radiation. And for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to assume that two objects are in thermal contact with each other if energy can be exchanged between them by the processes due to a temperature difference. And furthermore, thermal equilibrium occurs when two objects would not exchange energy by heat or electromagnetic radiation if they were placed in thermal contact. So looking at this graphic, we're going to consider the two objects A and B, which are not in thermal contact, and a third object C, which is a thermometer. And our goal is to determine whether A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So the thermometer first is placed in thermal contact with object A until thermal equilibrium is reached. And from that moment, the thermometer's reading will remain constant, which is uh, 22 and a half in this case. Um, and we're going to record this reading. So then the thermometer is then moved from object A and placed in thermal contact with object B. And the reading is again recorded after thermal equilibrium is reached. And, and if these two readings are the same, which they are, we can conclude that object A and object B are in thermal equilibrium with each other. If they are placed in contact with each other, there is no exchange of energy between them. So we're able to summarize these results in a statement known as the zeroth law of thermodynamics, which states that if objects A and B are separately in thermal equilibrium with a third object C, then A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other. This helps transition us to the definition of temperature, where we can think of temperature as a property that determines whether an object is in thermal equilibrium with other objects. In this next section, we are going to discuss thermometers and the Celsius temperature scale. So thermometers are devices used to measure the temperature of a system. All thermometers are based on the principle that some physical property of a system changes as the system's temperature changes. Some physical properties that change with temperature include the volume of a liquid, the dimensions of a solid, the pressure of a gas at a constant volume, the volume of a gas at a constant pressure, the uh, electric resistance of a conductor, and the color of an object. And the Celsius temperature scale is another measure of temperature where the ice point or freezing point of water is defined to have a temperature of zero degrees Celsius. So in this next section, we're going to discuss the constant volume gas thermometer and the absolute temperature scale. A version of a gas thermometer is a constant volume apparatus, which is shown in this graphic. The physical change exploited in this device is the variation of pressure of a fixed volume of gas with temperature. The flask is immersed in ice water bath and mercury reservoir B is raised or lowered until the top of mercury in column A is at the zero point on the scale. The height is the difference between the mercury levels in reservoir B and column A, which indicates the pressure in the flask at zero degrees Celsius which can also be found using the equation below, where P is pressure uh, equals the atmospheric pressure plus the liquid density times gravity times the height. So after that, 
The flask is then immersed in the water at the steam point, or 100 degrees Celsius, and the mercury reservoir is then readjusted until the top of column A is at zero on the scale. Doing this ensures that the gas's volume is the same as it was when the flask was in the ice bath, hence the designation constant volume. With the two pressure and temperature values, we are then able to plot them uh, as points on a graph, as shown on the right graphic. Then you would actually connect the two points together, which would serve as a calibration curve for the unknown temperatures. So continuing on, this graph now has three different gases, which each have different initial pressures, all plotted on the same graph. So something interesting is that if you were to extend the straight lines towards the negative temperatures, you can see that remarkably in every case, trial one, two, and three, the pressure is zero when the temperature is negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. So this temperature is often used as a basis for the absolute temperature scale, which sets negative 273.15 degrees Celsius as its zero point. Additionally, this temperature is often to referred to as the absolute zero. Moving on to the next section, where we're going to discuss the thermal expansion of solids and liquids. So thermal expansion is a consequence of the change in the average separation between the atoms in an object. The average coefficient of linear expansion is defined as alpha equals delta L over L initial divided by the change in temperature. But for the purposes of calculation, the equation is written as delta L equals alpha times L initial times change in temperature. And since the linear dimensions of an object change with temperature, it follows that surface area and volume change as well. Therefore, the average coefficient of volume expansion is defined as beta equals delta V divided by V initial divided by the change in temperature. Similarly to before, for the purpose of calculation, the equation is rewritten as delta V equals beta times V initial times the change in temperature. Last but not least, we will be discussing the macroscopic description of an ideal gas. And it is a low pressure or low density gas, which is commonly referred to as an ideal gas. In this graphic, we're going to suppose that we have an ideal gas contained inside a cylindrical container whose volume can be varied by means of a movable piston. And assuming that the cylinder doesn't leak, the mass of the gas remains constant. In such a system, when the gas is kept at a constant temperature, its pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. And when the pressure of that gas is kept constant, the volume is directly proportional to the temperature. Lastly, when the volume of the gas is kept constant, the pressure is directly proportional to its temperature. And these observations can be summarized by the equation of the state for an ideal gas, also known as the ideal gas law. And this equation states that the pressure times the volume equals the number of moles of gas in the sample times the universal gas constant times temperature. So that's a review of chapter 19 on temperature, where we discuss the topics of temperature and the zeroth law of thermodynamics, thermometers and the Celsius temperature scales, the constant volume gas thermometer and absolute temperature scale, the thermal expansion of solids and liquids, as well as the macroscopic description of an ideal gas. And that concludes our discussion on chapter 19. Thank you for making it this far in my super long video uh, on temperature. And as always, if you like the content that you saw in this video, don't be afraid to drop a like down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to never miss one of my future videos. See you all next week.